Welcome to the Real Film Nerds Podcast. Hiya, boys and girls, and welcome to the Real Film Nerds Podcast. My name is Matt, one of your two hosts. And with me, as always, trying to survive without knowing what the sun looks like anymore, Mysterious Mike Talent. Hey, everybody. How are you doing? I don't think they're going to respond. Oh, yeah, you're right. It's kind of a rhetorical, you know, I feel like everyone is is having a great time with this new... Uh, man, now, this is a question. Is this the second wave of the virus, or is this just the the uh, uh, first wave uh, getting bigger? I think it's just the new normal. Oh, the new normal. Okay. At first, I, I was going to say, is this a red wave but and then i was like no no politics all right we're done a <laughs> red wave yeah no <laughs> all right we're out thanks everybody for joining us catch us next week <laughs> all right so mysterious mike talent today is episode 177 let me take a deep breath eurovision song contest the story of fire saga Ooh, that was good that is a freaking long, long title. So, Mike, this, w- this was my pick. This is uh, Will Ferrell's latest flick, direct to Netflix. Came out of nowhere. I didn't even know it was coming out. Uh, Mike, like always, i like you to go first. Uh, first impressions on Eurovision. <clears throat> um, I liked it a lot, uh, probably for some weird reasons, but uh, I definitely liked it. Well, I th- I thought it was okay. I I don't know if it was uh great, but uh did I enjoy it? Yes. Uh it was funny. It was slapsticky. It was uh more of the classic Will Ferrell. Um it's still not quite to the level that he was with things like Old School or uh Talladega Nights, two of my favorite Will Ferrell flicks. It's not quite that level, but it's definitely not one of his worst movies. It's I'd say it's a it's a middle of the road Will Ferrell movie. Okay. That's cool. Um yeah, I liked it for some strange reasons that I'll tell you about a little bit later, but um yeah. Well all right, Mike. While we're doing that, how about this? Why why don't you give us the rundown for Eurovision? All right, Matt, sure. Um so uh Eurovision Song Contest, The Story of Fire Saga was directed by David Dopkin. Uh, its writers are uh, Will Ferrell and Andrew Steele. Uh, it's starring Will Ferrell, uh, Rachel McAdams, Dan Stevens, Mikhail Piersbrandt, uh, Pierce Brosnan, and Olafur Olofsson. I think I did that right. I don't know. And then, um, so this movie is when inspiring, aspiring musicians Lars and Sigrid are given the opportunity to represent their country at the world's biggest song competition. They finally have a chance to prove that any dream worth having is a dream worth fighting for. So I think uh, to get back on my first impression, since I jumped over uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, <dude. laughs> doing the rundown, I mean, dude, I'm I'm tired. I'm real tired. I, I Honestly, I, if I got three hours of sleep, I'd be shocked. But uh, um. I think I would enjoy it more if I knew more about the real Eurovision. And I really don't. I'm an American, like a lot of us. <laughs> and we don't pay attention to stuff that's outside our borders, I guess. I don't know. I mean, do we even get Eurovision on TV here in the States? Uh, I don't know. Um, I, I heard about it when I was in Europe. Um, and I got the rundown from from some Europeans. Uh, and it sounded kind of ridiculous. And watching this movie i was like oh that's exactly what they explained it as well i i have to say it was uh interesting the songs were unique uh it's um uh, what do you think of them uh doing iceland because uh i know you've been there fairly recently um i was stoked um it, it, you know in in a kind of a weird way this movie is great advertising for iceland uh it's very pretty um some of the things in the in the movie are a little bit fantastical but uh 
I'd say for the most part, they they nailed what Iceland looks like. Um, just to, just some of the random whales jumping out of the water isn't normal, I don't think. Uh, <laughs> well, and look how close they were to the shore, too. That was pretty ridiculous. And there was it no was splash. two of them, too. Yeah. It was like, no, that, there's like 20 feet of water there, and there's like a 20-foot like high whale jumping out of it. But fine, whatever. It's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looked like some blue whales or so, something giant. But um, uh, no, I, I, it was awesome um, uh, seeing that. Because it, it's neat to see Iceland uh, represented um, a little bit in there. And uh, it, it's fun kind of seeing the countryside again. Because this was filmed partly in Iceland. So that's neat. So uh, when you were over there, Mike, did you get to sing uh, Yaya Ding Dong? <laughs> no. Uh, and I'm, I'm not sure. I, I'm fairly confident that maybe that was some, some, some uh, song that... Uh, the Icelandic people like, but uh, no, I did not uh, sing that. It could just have been a joke in the movie because it's like it, it fit in pretty well by like the, you know. Anyway, it's kind of the running, long running joke, the long game joke. Dude, that song is so freaking catchy. It's ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. I I can't tell you any of the words to any of the other songs. But ya ya ding dong, I can I can almost sing that for you word for word because that that song was just absolutely just yeah. But I believe it. I mean, you know, every country except for America has good old fashioned drinking songs, and that to me definitely is a drinking song. You know, when you're sitting there stumbling and falling all over the place, it just gets so ingrained in your head you'll never forget the lyrics. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it was. <laughs> It was funny. Uh, that that was a good funny part in in the movie. Well, Mike. Speaking of drinking. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, I think <laughs> I ha- I think I have a little question so for you, Matt. Um I see you have a a pint of something. What are you drinking? Ah. <sighs> well, Mike. Thanks for asking. One of the reasons why I'm so exhausted is because I was down in Phoenix yesterday and I went to a place I haven't been for a little while, my favorite brewery on the planet to date, Four Peaks. And Four Peaks in Tempe has uh, their, we are now no longer allowed to have restaurants open anymore, so they were completely shut down, but you could go and pick stuff up. So I got uh, quite a bit of beer. I got a couple growlers, and I got uh, some canned beer that I was only going to think I was going to be able to get at baseball season, and I will be sharing some of those later down the road. But this one is um, their oatmeal stout. It's the Four Peaks. Uh, let me get like the official everything. Four Peaks oatmeal stout, English style oatmeal stout. The dark chocolatey roastness of this English style stout starts on the bitter side, but is tamed by an infusion of nitrogen, which is also responsible for the cascading bubbles and velvety mouth feel that make authentic stouts so revered. Whew. Oh, wow, man. What a description. That's a good right, one, man. So it's from their website. Uh, they, they hired someone to do that one. So um, their stout, they do not sell it in bottles or cans or anything like that. The only way to get it is by going to the tap room or the brewery and getting a growler because the nitrogen, the, it's something with the nitrogen when they blew, brew it with the nitrogen or something. I don't remember exactly what it is. I mean, come on, Guinness does it, but. Uh, but they maybe, have the little thing. They have the little thing inside of it. It's hard to get nitrogen in um, like cans and stuff. So like there's only a few uh, nitro brews out there. Um, I think uh, Left Hand has their uh, milk stout and that is a nitrogen. Um, but yeah, there's not, there's not a lot of nitrogen beers out there. Right. And that's, that's what they were saying. That's why I can't get it locally. So I got that. And then, uh, I got another one, which I'm probably going to drink before I'm able to talk about it on a podcast because it was a small one, but they did a special brew with a hundred other breweries. It's called black is beautiful and it's a fundraiser and it is an Imperial stout and Legally, they can only sell it in a 32 ounce growler because how strong it is. <laughs> and, nice, dude. I drank some last night and it is wicked, it is very strong. It is uh aged in um bourbon, 
cherry wood barrels and you can taste the cherry and you can taste the bourbon in this this stout that they made with a hundred other breweries and it has all kinds of hops in it. It's much like when they did the the special brew for the Yarnell 19 where they used 19 different hops and grains and stuff. Well, they used a whole bunch of different hops and grains in this one. And I mean, it is, it is one of the craziest, darkest beards I've ever had in my life. Nice dude. Nice. Uh, I always love those uh, bourbon barrel aged anything. Uh, it tends to be stouts because it it adds to the flavor quite nicely, but uh, man, that sounds wonderful. Yeah, I I don't know if any breweries over in your area did it. Again, it was a hundred. I don't know if it's just Arizona or just Southwest or whatever, but it's called Black Is Beautiful, and it's a fundraiser. Right, I'll, yeah, so. I'll have to check it out. Um, so, Mike, wh- what are you drinking? I I can talk about Four Peaks all freaking day long, and I need to stop. So, your turn. Matt, I I am drinking a uh, beer. It's um, from a brewery called Terrapin, which is uh, out of Athens, Georgia, and it's Cryosphere. It's uh, one of their new, uh, you know, IPAs, and uh, it is wonderful. Let me let me see if I have a description. Ah, Cryosphere IPA packs in huge amounts of hop flavor and aroma while minimizing bitterness. We achieve this by using state of the art hop product called Cryo Hops. In both the brewing and the dry hopping of this beer, by highlighting the unique cryogenic process, we expose the best attributes of what these hops have to offer. Nice. Nice. Now, is it cryo hop because it's a weed beer again? No, no, no. I hope not. Uh, (laughs) No, no. uh, That that was another one from Georgia, but that that, that is uh, Sweetwater uh, Brewery. yeah, th- this one uh, is uh, from Athens, and Sweetwater's out of uh, Atlanta, I think, or just outside of Atlanta. But uh, anyway, um, Matt, uh, speaking of breweries and things, so you're allowed to take stuff to go. You brought some growlers, or uh-huh. or you bought them there. Were, I do they have them, growlers? Yes. Do they serve? Uh, have you seen these? They're like cans that they they fill on site at the tap and then they seal them right there it's called crawlers it's like a can growler have you seen that i have not seen that here at four peaks sir no i did not oh man that's cool too because a lot of times you can get those beers that are on tap just once in a while and you can just throw them in a in a crawler uh, one of the local breweries in my area they do they do 32 ounce uh uh crowlers so it's kind of cool you know a couple beers and then one of them just does 16 ounce and then you know of course we got our growlers and stuff so i have i have a couple 64 ounces and a couple 32 ounce growlers so got it all covered oh yeah dude you gotta have a good growler lying around somewhere definitely and i i've i've not as many as you i have a handful but I, i do have some so not to keep going about the brewery thing, but Mike, you know, we're both very passionate about beer. Um, I know you've beer been and movies. A, uh, and movies, beer and movies that we should just change the name. Not real film nerds. We could just call it beer film nerds. <laughs> but, um, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, Mike's shaking his head. Oh, the baby. Hey, that sounds better. Um, not to keep talking about breweries, but uh, they, they are nice and they are fun, and especially when you can go and have a good brew and a, a, a nice bratwurst or a sandwich or something. Oh, dude, those were the days. God, terrible way after to reminisce about eating in public. But uh, <laughs> yeah, th- those were the days. <laughs> those were the days. Uh, Three months yeah. ago. <laughs> yeah. B- back when I could see people and, 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 and eat in public. Oh, man. When the only reason you would cover your nose and mouth is if someone farted and it smelled really bad. That's true. That's true. Or if you're polite, if you sneezed. But I mean, you know, we're not polite. Come on. We're film nerds. But yeah, that's true. Mike, you've been to breweries across the country and and the globe. I am sure you probably went to a handful when you were overseas on vacations and things. Uh, Do you have a favorite brewery? Oh, man, that's a great question. Um. I I don't know. Uh, there, every brewery offers different things, and I think that's kind of the reason I like all breweries. Um, some they have live music, like there's one uh, that I went to that has kind of like this, like inside of their like warehousey part where they have all their um, equipment to to brew. 
they also have like a space that's just open probably for expansion later on but for now they're using it for like they have like performances and stuff and it's just that's fun you know um I've been, you know, I've been all over. I've been to California and Chicago and all these different breweries and um they all offer different different fun things. So it's like um Stone has all this cool like visual like gargoyle stuff. So that's like just neat to look at. They just have all kinds of kind of like artwork and stuff and then uh there was one in in Tampa that I went to that has like um just cool uh like murals on the wall and stuff. I, I don't know, man. They're they're few and far between. So I don't I can't say with confidence that I have a specific favorite brewery. Well, for me, it's because Four Peaks. I mean, that was like the first like real microbrewery I went to, and they came along when microbreweries were not really big at all. I mean, I spent a lot of money there when I was in college, and a lot of it at Four Peaks is the memories of going there. After putting the newspaper to bed on a Thursday night, getting the discounted pictures of Kilt Lifter with 15 or 20 of us from the newsroom and just, you know, uh, I don't want to say getting tanked, but feeling good on a Thursday night. You know, that was a regular weekly ritual was going to the Four Peaks 8th Street uh, Brewery. Loved it. Loved it. So it's probably a level of that, that and being in Arizona in my hometown. But I mean, I haven't been to a bunch like you across the country, but I've been to a lot in Arizona, a handful in California and New Mexico. And um, I think I've been to one or two in Texas, you know, and I, nice. I like, I, like you, I like going to all of them, but Four Peaks is, you know, I just have so much history there. It's, it's my go-to brewery, you know, and I love Kilt Lifter. Even if I had never been to Four Peaks and I drank Kilt Lifter, it's such a good beer. Oh, so good. Well, that's awesome, man. No, that's that's good. I mean, I I love the fact that every brewery is different. And they're always bringing different things. They they all have their own either theming or just just feel and and style and I like that. No 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 brewery is the same. And, and the beers, the beers are always different. I mean, yeah, they, everyone has a stout and everyone has this and everyone has that, but almost every brewery has something that's a little bit different than everyone else. You know, they'll have like one brew that's like you wouldn't find typically anywhere else for the most part. So all right, well, I, I'm going to stop talking about breweries because this is a movie podcast, not a brewery podcast. Uh, it's true. So for for that, Mike, um, let's go ahead and get into it so we can spoil the film. Uh, it's my turn for my question, the most important question of the Real Film Nerds podcast. Mike, hold on. I got to take a deep breath again. How does Eurovision Song Contest, The Story of Fire Saga, relate to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Oh, Matt, that's a, that's a wonderful question. And, you know, I was getting a little worried. Uh, this is a modern movie. This just came out on Netflix this uh, last week. But it seems like since it was a European movie, uh, a lot of the people that worked on this movie were work on European films and turns out a lot of the MC movie MCU movies aren't really filmed in Europe. But I did find somebody who related to it. The costume designer on this movie, uh, Anna B. Shepard, uh, also worked on Captain America the First Avenger. Nice, man. Nice. Dude, seriously, it it amazes me how easily well not easy i'm sure it takes you a while to find these these people but how we are able to find it every single week i mean we ha honestly you haven't missed one in a while you know you haven't come to the conclusion we're like dude i can't find anything you've yeah, just been no, rolling no no uh the uh i think one of my favorite ones that i, I found was how it related to jaws yeah that dude, that was like one of the most impressive ones because that movie. I mean, I don't, I don't even know if, uh, um, uh, what's his face? The uh, see uh, again, no sleep. Spielberg? I can't think of J.J. J. Abrams. I don't J. even J. know Abrams. if like J.J. Abrams or anyone else that was in has done all this stuff for Star Wars and MCU and all these other things were even like conceived when like you know Jaws came out and you found some dude that related to it. You know, I did, dude. All these big names today 
you know, uh, that are involved, you know, it's just, it's amazing. Anyways. Oh, Matt. So, um, this is, this is a little bit jumping off topic, but I'll, I'll try and make it quick. Um, hey, um, you know, I'm real good at that. You're allowed to Mike. You're allowed. Uh, so, so, uh, I just wanted to have a shout out, uh, for, uh, our good friend, uh, Vinny, uh, Jurassi. I, I think he listens to the, uh, podcast, but, um, he uh, rented a, a movie theater in our area, and uh, we ended up getting to watch a movie, but it's an old movie um, before uh, they started locking down everything again. And uh, I got to go to the theater again, Matt. It was, it was wonderful. Was it magical? Uh, yeah. Uh, we, we watched, uh, we had a, a private showing uh, for 20 people for Jurassic Park, and it nice. was awesome. Nice. Well... That's not off topic, Mike, because I, I will bring this up as well. Um, the movie theaters here in Prescott, well, one of them, Harkins has been shut down this whole time. Harkins, that's their corporate stance. Uh, that's the family stance. They, they don't want anyone to get sick until they can figure all this out. Harkins has been shut down. Picture Show opened up for the first time since all this got shut down on June 26th, which was last Friday, and immediately everything got shut down again yesterday uh was it monday or was it tuesday i think the governor announced it on monday and everything went to effect on tuesday doesn't matter anyways oh, they literally, oh okay like, yeah just they opened just up shut and down. shut down so, so they had one weekend yeah and they did it you know i was like well what are they going to show well they did much like what uh your buddy Vinny did they did classic they said they were going to do classic films so older you know like matrix uh jurassic park uh, 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 big, huge blockbusters from 15, 20 years ago. Oh, man. Uh, so that was a very neat experience. Uh, got to eat some movie theater popcorn. Uh, got to have the reclining chairs that I love so much. It, it was uh, it was totally uh, a neat experience, and it was a lot of fun. Did you social distance, Mike? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's good. Did you did was it just you and uh, Mags or did you bring uh uh Flinithy? Oh no, we did not bring uh our son. He was uh being watched by the grandparents. So it was uh, a nice vacation. Nice. Wow, the first time away from him like since his birth. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, Mike. Well, let's roll into it. Uh from here on out peeps is if you know us our format, we are now going to spoil the film we watched. So Eurovision, Mike, uh, what scenes did you really enjoy? Um, so, you know, kind of coming straight out the gate on this one, Matt, I loved all the Iceland uh, filming. I've kind of already talked about that a little bit, but um, I love seeing uh, Iceland again. It is a extremely beautiful country. If uh, anyone gets a chance to visit, um, it is amazing. It's cold, but... Um, it's still just breathtaking and they showed some of that um even some of the kind of opening scene with like kind of the dream sequence or fantasy sequence yeah the is, fantasy music video yeah is yeah. uh that's that's like totally like awesome iceland like i was like yeah this is cool i mean this video thing's kind of weird but the the, the background's awesome <laughs> um <laughs> the landscape's pretty <laughs> um and uh you know it was on a trip to iceland that we found out about the the um eurovision contest and they like uh we we kind of went on this uh tour for uh, like a guided tour and um we were with some a bunch of other europeans and uh they told us about it and they said it was just this ridiculous show that everybody knows is terrible but they all just love watching it and it's just it's it's like a, it seems like everybody's guilty pleasure to watch this kind of people just be ridiculous like i i, I don't know i guess like we have america's top talent and and uh, dancing well not dancing with the stars what what is uh the, the voice. one of those others the voice and American there's that Idol. newest one what's the newest one the mask singer or something yeah the mask singer dude i i stacy has had me watch the mask singer after a while, it starts growing on you because you try and figure out who the hell the people are, and it start, really starts getting like kind of fun. 
and I, I've watched like two seasons of The Mass Singer. Now I'm behind on what's you know airing or what just finished airing, but it's it's addictive. It's kind of like crack because they've gotten some of the weirdest people to come on and sing, and you would never think that they're that good or that they're that bad. I mean, some of them are really bad. So yeah, it's a guilty pleasure. Yeah, so I think I think that's kind of what it is for Europe, and then you know everyone votes on everyone else. So that's kind of an interesting format. Like you can't vote for your own country. And so that's an interesting format to, to kind of see play out. Uh, so uh, that was fun to watch. Uh, this is kind of like a, a goofy kind of uh, slapsticky movie, but um, I liked it. It was fun. Um, I like Rachel McAdams and uh, Will Ferrell is uh, he at times can be a little much, but uh this one he wasn't super Will Ferrell, if I mean if that makes sense, because there's there's sometimes when he's just like a little too intense. I don't know. Yeah, he's really over the top. He can really go over the top of some of his uh, hardcore slapsticky characters that he's come up with. All right, Mike, do you want to know a problem that I had with this film? Yes, I yeah, I absolutely do. All right, now if you listen to me on the radio, you will already know the answer to this, but. There was a scene where they specifically went after Arizona with the Americans wearing ASU and U of A sweaters and T-shirts. Did you notice that? Oh, no, I didn't notice that, man. But, I, you know, I, I didn't really. Uh, okay, I just missed it. Sorry. Yeah, it's cool. The whole scene where they're making fun of Americans, Will Ferrell's like, you, you stupid Americans, go find a Starbucks, you know, and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't want you here. And then really, they're like, we don't. They're like, where's the Starbucks? He's like, everywhere. <laughs> it's so true. Anyways, the two guys are wearing uh, Arizona State shirts. The two girls are wearing U of A shirts slash sweaters. And I pointed out on the radio to Lisa, who is also a sun devil, but has brought a poor girl, a uh, wildcat into this world. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, like, her... there's, there's no way that these people would be talking to each other, right? That's the thing. If they're like before college or after college, fine. You, would, you can date a sun devil or a lumberjack or whatever. No problems. But when you're in school, dating someone from the other college is i mean that's heresy you know that's that's you get burned at the stake for stuff like that you know wow. and so that wow. was the biggest problem i had is that the they're both not one but two are dating yeah no no i'm sorry will you dropped the ball <laughs> i love the um the ridiculous uh costumes and and, and stuff and it's like where's this stuff coming from it's just like random like colors and 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 uh the uh the hamster wheel was ridiculous <laughs> and i loved it that was probably my favorite parts were the the productions like when they're actually like singing and all the stuff that's going on and how over the top like all the productions are i mean they're just absolutely ridiculous it was so much fun really enjoyed those parts <laughs> yeah it, it was uh that that stuff and like um uh you know i didn't know pierce brosnan brosnan was in this but i mean he's not really in it that much but he does have kind of an interesting character where he just pretty much doesn't like his son <laughs> like at all well and <laughs> on top of it he's the village bicycle <laughs> oh yes everybody gets a ride yeah yeah and and <laughs> You know, oh the sister joke, like, the, the 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 joke. The, yeah. the, is this your sister? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't. We don't think so. But they can't, didn't know because how much his dad got around. <laughs> <laughs> and then you come to find out at the end. I mean, they roll back on this. You find out at the end that the reason why he was so obsessed with uh, Secret's mom for so long is because she's the only one that ever told him no. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's just it, it, it's just funny. Yeah, we're pretty sure she's not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that literally was a running gag for almost the entire movie, almost the whole thing. Like everybody kept asking, and and they did it on purpose, man. Their hair looks almost identical. The color of their hair is the same. It's curled the same. It's yeah. 
anyways yeah I, I i don't know man i i just uh i was i enjoyed having another kind of uh lighthearted uh kind of fun movie to watch uh again like um our last movie uh i'm blanking on it real quick uh was 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 funny quick mike and to the internets uh, yeah yeah episode 176 tributary the lovebirds yeah lovebirds <laughs> um it it was uh you know a lot of comedy in that and then this was you know this one's a little bit more slapsticky and ridiculous but uh, i thought it was kind of fun and you know we we could use a little bit of fun right now since everything's getting terrible again and uh you can't go eat in public it's terrible matt dude you have no public it's ruthless man it's ruthless and you know, there's nothing wrong with a good Will Ferrell movie. And this is a good Will Ferrell movie. I Well, average. Um, it's, you know, there's nothing wrong with slapstick. We need the levity right now. And I think there's a reason why this has been number one all week on Netflix. Because people need this. People need more of this. And especially being new. You know, a lot of the people I talk to, uh, friends and family and things, are turning to comedy right now. Not so much Will Ferrell movies, but I'm like, you know, go watch Step Brothers. Go watch Talladega Nights. Yeah, you've probably seen it a hundred times by now. 101 won't hurt. If it makes you feel a little bit better that day or even for five minutes, go do it. Screw it. Why oh, not? Man. Step Brothers, such a good movie. Oh, dude, Step Brothers is incredible. Incredible. Love that movie. It's a Catalina fucking wine mixer. <laughs> Oh, I love what he, what uh what he's trying to bury Will Ferrell, and, and he's <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not dead. <laughs> so good, or when they build uh, the bug beds. Oh yeah, and oh. then just crushes him. Yeah, and <laughs> he's like he runs and he's like, Dad, Dad, I screwed up real bad. <laughs> I've done stuff like that where I'm like, yeah. Yeah, Bob. Bob, I screwed up real bad. <laughs> You're like, like trying to like mouth how bad he screwed up, and it's like hard to get it out. <laughs> like someone's really hurt, or you really cost them some money, you know. <laughs> Anyways, uh... all right, Mike. Let's do it. Let's uh, let's get it out there. Um, I think I went first last week, so uh, I'll go with uh, Mike. How many reels do you give? Uh. Eurovision Song Contest, the story of Fire Saga. Um, I'm gonna give this one three and a half reels because uh, I I enjoyed it quite a bit. It was it was different. It was it was something I needed to see. Well, Mike, we don't agree again. Yes, I am the dick. I give it two and a half reels. Oh man, yeah, no, that's fine, man. We can disagree. I, I thought it was average, you know? It's again, it's not as worst. It's not as worst. It's not as best. It's right in the middle. I had fun. I enjoyed it. I recommend people, especially right now, go check it out. Won't hurt, especially if you have Netflix. Hell, even if you don't have Netflix, you can do the 30 day trial. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or, or you know, you know, someone knows somebody who has it. It's like it's kind of like there's always somebody who's in an MCU movie. You know, it's the seven degrees of Netflix. Right. It's probably really only one degree. You only have to ask one person. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you don't have it, go ask your brother. If you don't have a brother, go ask your sister. If you don't have a sister, you know, ask your boss. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you don't, Somebody. Yeah, you don't have a boss, uh, ask the protester next to you. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, sharing is caring. Yeah. If... if uh, if you can't eat outside, ask your Uber Eats driver. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, your Uber Eats delivery man. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm sure they'll let you borrow it. You know, who cares? It's the pandemic. Just remember, you got to s- start off things with, you know, since we can't do anything, it'd be great if you would let me use your Netflix account. Right. You know, something like that. You know, you got to guilt them into it. So it's, I have to socially distance. Can I socially distance by watching a Netflix account, please? Yeah. It's for the yeah. greater good. Yeah. And and you you can tell them we don't have to chill or anything. 
That'd be kind of awkward. Your Uber <laughs> Eats guy shows up. He's like, yeah, can I get your Netflix password? It's cool. We don't need to Netflix and chill. Just give me your password. I'll give you a big tip. <laughs> no, that's not going with the Netflix and chill. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that kind of tip. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mike. Well, next week, it is your choice because I picked Eurovision. What movie are we going to be talking about, bud? All right, Matt. Um, you know, it's it's going to be a little bit more serious movie, but I, I, I didn't want to do a Netflix movie every, every week, uh, which we clearly could do. Netflix is cranking out the content. I know their content's going to slow down here pretty soon because everything that was in production stopped a little while back, but they still had kind of a backlog. Like Netflix has had this plan for quite a while. So I think I think this month might be the last month, uh, uh, July, where they have a whole bunch of new content. I think next, next month they might be starting to lag. Um, but... For this next month, I decided to do one on uh, Prime Video. So if you're a Prime member and you have access to this, whether you know it or not, like my parents, and um, you can watch, uh, or you can watch this movie called Seventy Five Hundred, and it, it's uh, starring uh, Joseph Gordon Levitt, Levitt, and uh, you know it's it's a movie about some terrorists and a plane and hijacking and all that stuff. So. Hopefully it's pretty good, but it's an Amazon original, so I figured, why not? Nice. Mike, I got a question, and I don't know if you have it or not. Do you have Hulu? I do not have Hulu. Uh, I have a bitch. quite a bit of things, Matt, but uh, I actually feel like I have too much stuff. Um, I have I have Netflix, I have Prime Video, I have uh, HBO. I feel like that's enough, but dude, I got more than you. Dude, I know you do. I know you do. Did, oh, oh. Speaking of that, Matt, did you get a, a price increase? Because uh, I saw that uh, YouTube TV just jacked everybody's rates because they got they got um, MTV and Comedy Central and all that the Viacom channels. The but they they raised the price by fifteen bucks, man. Oh, damn. Well, I don't so have YouTube six, TV. I have AT and T TV now, which you used to have, which I still am trying to split with you. One of these days, you'll give in. But uh, it includes HBO Max for free, so you know. But yeah, uh, well, uh, maybe I uh, yeah. the the we'll see. the two most watched. It also has HBO for free included now as well because it's all like one thing now. HBO Max and HBO is like one thing now. Um. But no, uh, uh, the two that I always tell people to get, if you like TV, get Hulu, and if you like movies, get Netflix. Netflix is doing more and more TV shows. But uh, Hulu, I watch Hulu probably as much as I watch Netflix. Uh, I've been ramping up some of my TV watching on Netflix more. I'm pretty hooked on this show called Formula One. It's absolutely amazing. It's a docudrama about Formula One car racing in Europe. And it's interesting that... Again, another thing Europeans just go bananas for and Americans don't give two craps about. It's fascinating because Formula One is clearly, clearly more difficult than things like NASCAR. Well, the driving aspect of it is. But um, anyways, there's a film coming out on Hulu sometime this month in July. I don't remember. I want to say it's like July 10th. Might be later. I really want to watch and review it. It's kind of a different take on the Groundhog Day thing again. It's called Palm Springs. It's starring uh, Andy Samberg. And it's basically he keeps living, reliving the same day over and over again in Palm Springs. And it looks hilarious. It looks really, really good. So you might have to sign up for a, a free trial so we can review that one. Okay. Well, I mean... Uh, I will, uh, I will, I will do that. I guess uh, we'll, we'll talk we need about to, it. When we, we need get to, there. Re- yeah, we need to review uh, the new content. You know, there's looks like uh, they keep delaying the movies and the poor movie theaters, uh, the chains, um, Cinemark, AMC, uh, Regal, all end up delaying as well because they were all going to open for Tenant and uh, Mulan, and everything got pushed. So I think those movies now are opening at the end of this month. And so all those theaters move their opening towards the end of this month. Um, so well, just kind of a nightmare for them. 
Palm Springs, I believe, don't quote me on it, but I believe Palm Springs was originally supposed to come out in the theaters, and they started shopping it around because of the Rona, and Hulu bought it. And so that's why Hulu's dropping it, because it's done. It's ready to roll. So it'll... uh. I think it'll be fun. I like I like Andy Samberg. He's pretty he's pretty funny on uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine and Hot Rod and you know SNL things like that. He he's he's a pretty good comedian. So yeah, he's got some interesting humor. Um, I know he did a, the the Lonely Island stuff. Um, my my favorite song. I'm on a boat. Um, <laughs> but uh, um, I have a shirt that I wear when I go on a boat. It says I'm on a boat. Now um, is it a shirt? That says I'm on a boat with a picture of a boat. Absolutely. Nice. That's even better. <laughs> it is. And I can only wear it when I'm on a boat. So it's like very limited time that I can wear it. It's kind of the rules, right? Hmm? It's kind of the rules, right? Because you're on a yeah, boat. Oh, yeah. So if you wear it and you're like in a movie theater, you're not on a boat. I mean, you're lying to everybody. Yes. So uh, that has never occurred. I've only worn it on a boat. Well, all right, Mike. What else you got? Um, I I think that's it. Uh, oh, you know what? I got something. I totally oh, forgot. Damn it! I'm so tired. I keep forgetting stuff. Uh, I was going to discuss this with you, but we can bring it out on the podcast real fast. Uh, we have an opportunity to possibly have real film nerds T-shirts, and the idea of the T-shirts right now is that they are going to be parodies of movie posters. And Ooh. so we need to figure out what parodies we're going to do and how we are going to do them or if we even want to do t-shirts because if people don't want to buy t-shirts of the Real Film Nerds podcast, uh, why waste the time? So let us know if you are interested in having a fun parody, goofy, Real Film Nerds t-shirt. I mean, what comes to mind right off the bat is your favorite Jaws. I don't know how the hell we'll do a parody of Jaws, but we'll have to figure something out. I know that'll definitely be one. Dude, we could just have um, a person swimming and then a, a, a reel attacking them or a popcorn attacking them. Yeah. It's easy. Popcorn Man. That that's, that's what our logo is officially named, Popcorn Man. All right, Popcorn Man yeah. can go uh, uh, attacking him, or or we could have Popcorn Man like or, or like a like a movie reel uh, sending up its film to go get him. I don't know, well, like well, a tentacle. Yeah, we need to work on it. We need to work on it. My my good buddy, host of Retro uh, Rogues Retrospective Retro Rogue Live podcast. I, I I'm screwing up the name. Something awful. But uh, he is getting back into doing T-shirts out of his garage. He is a well-known comic book and graphic artist. And he is giving us the opportunity to do this. So if you like comic books and pop culture, you are listening to movies. He does movie reviews as well. Go check him out. out. But he's going to be doing them for us. And he's willing to do the artwork for us too, which is um, amazing. I don't know what he's going to charge us, if anything. But uh, he, I think he's more excited to be able to do some more work that's fun than doing graphic design stuff. So, like, uh, one I was thinking for a parody since we had a whole long series of Back to the Future, doing, like, a Back to the Future with the DeLorean and, uh, you know, us standing next to it and you as Marty McFly and me as, like, Doc Brown and then saying real film nerds over the top instead of Back to the Future. I think that'd be kind of funny. Uh, yeah, that'd be fun. Um, Matt, I think I think being the real film nerds, we'd have to have some sort of MCU parody. Oh, hell yeah, we do. That's going to be a tough one. We, we could do it, though. We could do it because we're going to fight over who we're going to do and what, like, you know, parody we're going to have. But, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And and Dave has drawn both for Marvel and DC and Image and basically all the big names he's drawn professionally for them. So hopefully we don't get him in trouble because he's real good at it. <laughs> 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 all right well we'll just have to come up with a good idea man i i, I don't know uh we'll have to talk about it some more yes definitely but, um that that yeah that sounds kind of fun um, I, I think i'm gonna throw up a poll as well to see if we can get some interest too okay sounds good man all right mike well i think uh i think that's enough for me i have ranted en- enough but uh eurovision go check it out it's a fun movie all right 
um man i i guess with that uh you know uh i will tell everybody to check us out on the socials twitter instagram facebook and you know uh go watch as many movies as you can uh we love movies there's not a lot i mean it looks like everything is going to be shutting down again which is terrible so try and try and use some of that time to escape from the uh the realities of the pandemic it's awful so you know try and keep your sanity stay at home and watch as many movies as you can <laughs> oh yeah there you go dang it well you're the one that ends the pod so you can say it Mike. all right all right well anyway like matt said stay at home and watch as many movies as you can uh and uh thank you everyone for listening and uh fill out our poll on uh what kind of t-shirt parodies uh, you think we should do that'd be great Thank you for listening to The Real Film Nerds. Now, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Real Film Nerds. Now, go out and catch a movie. Good morning, Magic 99.1. Who's this? I just want to see how long you'd wait before, you know, <laughs> I could reply. <laughs> I knew knew it was you anyway. Good morning, Matt Hinshaw from the Real Film Nerds Podcast. How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you doing, Miss Lisa? You know what? Pretty good for a Monday morning. Kind of dragging just a little bit today. How about you? I'm always dragging, but, (laughs) you know, that's just me. That is just you. Yes. Tell me what'd you see and what'd you think? Well, you, you know what I saw? We talked about it. Did you, The question, oh, the real question is, right. did you get to see it? <laughs> I totally forgot. No, I didn't see it. I've let you down once again, Matt. I'm sorry. <clears throat> well, that's why I'm here. I'm here to encourage you to go and watch it now. Okay, tell and everybody what it was, because I've forgotten. <laughs> that is, it is Will Ferrell's latest straight-to-Netflix film. It just came out on Friday, June 26th. All right, it's a long... Long title. Okay. It is Eurovision Song Contest, The Story of Fire Saga. <laughs> and what did you think? Did you like it? Because it got really bad reviews. It's uh, it's not Will Ferrell's best movie. Right. It is not his worst movie. It is kind of in the middle. It's probably one of the better ones he's had in years. Okay. Okay. Well, on Friday, we um, we did a little promo on uh, Unsolved Mysteries. What happened to Will Ferrell's career? <laughs> that's that's a good, that's a really good question. Right. Um, <laughs> it was pretty funny. You know, it, he, he started sliding after, uh, uh, God, I can't even think of the one where he really started sliding hard, but the, the Sherlock Holmes, the Holmes and Watson one he did. I mean, that was so, so bad. I didn't even see it. Like that's how bad that movie was. And I I love Will Ferrell. Well, and he used to just be, you know, dead on. You, you would never miss a Will Ferrell movie because he was always so good at picking the scripts and uh, always so funny in the movies. Right. Yeah. And a a lot of it, he wrote with his partner, uh, Adam McKay. And he, Adam McKay, I think, was involved in this one a little bit, but not not a whole lot. Yeah. And uh, the director of Eurovision is the director of Wedding Crashers. Okay. He's a great director. I mean, Eurovision is a tough one. Like, I was not familiar with Eurovision before watching the film. I had heard about it, but I wasn't super familiar with it. Now, if you're European or you've been in Europe and you know about it or you're just big into singing contests, yeah. You might get a lot more out of this film than I did. It's funny. There's a lot of singing in it. It's slapsticky. It's definitely raises your spirits at a time right now. Um, but again, it's it's not my favorite Will Ferrell movie, but it's not the worst. It's kind of it's kind of in the middle for, okay. for a Will Ferrell movie. And I think what you so. said is a really great point. I mean, it's just a, a movie that will lift your spirits right now, and that's that's a good way to describe it. Definitely, it, it's. It's funny. It has really good moments. It has some rough moments. It it does kind of have a a shout out to Arizona though. Yeah. And I'm gonna call them out on it. I mean, I'll call it out here, but I'm definitely gonna call them out on it on the podcast. The Americans that they make fun of is four college kids, uh, 
from America, and when you run into them and Will Ferrell's having making fun of them and you know uh, yelling at them for being American and all this stuff, yeah, two of them, two of them, the the boys are wearing uh, Arizona State t-shirts slash sweaters, and their girlfriends are wearing U of A t-shirts slash sweaters, and that would never happen. Never, that never, never ever happen. happen. Nope, you're exactly right. You would never right. have a Sun Devil <laughs> openly, willingly date a wildcat right, during right. school. Now, but out I, of school, before school, right. sure, but not during college. No, and I have to tell you <laughs> that my husband and I, two Sun Devils, did give birth to a wildcat, though, so that can happen, just so you know. Oh. I know, and, and, and you have not, and you have not forced her to change her last name yet. <laughs> well, we're working on it. You're working on it. All right. All right. No, good. no. I have to ask you, Matt. What is your favorite Will Ferrell mo- movie? Because there are so many good ones. Oh gosh, I it's know. hard to pick a favorite because I love them so much. It's a toss-up between Old School uh-huh. and probably. Probably Talladega Nights. Oh Those two are just hilarious. But there's Step Brothers. There's Blades of Glory. Daddy's I Home. Know. I mean, Elf. There are so many. Anchorman. There are so many great Will Ferrell movies. He, and uh, we'll Anchorman. S- yeah, the yeah. original Anchorman is incredible. Yeah. And yeah, Elf is definitely one of my favorite Christmas movies of all time. For sure. For sure. So we'll give Will a pass on this one. How many reels are you going to get? Yeah. At? Like I said, it's it's not awful. It's not it's not real, real, real bad. It's uh, just okay. So I gave it a two and a half reels. Two and a half reels out of five. All right, yeah. that's fair yeah. enough. All right, what are we going to yeah. review next week? That's a, that's a good question. I I'm it's my uh, co-host turn to pick, okay. but uh, I'm thinking there's a new Charlie Theron movie coming out on Netflix called The Old Guard. That sounds interesting. Okay. And it's called it's uh, a covert team of immortal mercenaries are suddenly exposed and must now fight to keep their identity a secret, just as an unexpected new member is discovered. How bad could so that be, looks, right? Yeah, it looks like an interesting <laughs> action movie. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, I, I know my co-host has been wanting to do some older stuff, too. You know, yeah. he's like uh, he's a huge fan of The Matrix, so we might do something like that. Uh, I don't know. It's it's his turn. I picked Eurovision. All right. Very <laughs> good. Well, we'll uh, look forward to seeing what uh, you guys decide to watch next Monday, Matt. Thank you for chatting with me this morning on what yeah, station? On Magic 99.1. Thank you.